boy, is it hot today. Which makes it a perfect day for monitoring BTU of your hydronic system. Mm -hmm. And also find out why I'm stuck inside this bubble. Coming up next on Tech Review. That's right. What a perfect time for you to be monitoring your BTU efficiencies in your hydronic system. Mm -hmm. So, what is hydronic systems energy metering and why do I need it? Well, I'll tell you. Okay, let's assume that the building, facility, hospital, or university you're sitting in is a bubble. Mm -hmm. And of course, it has utility services, which would include water. So, this is the influent into your bubble, and when you're done using the water, it exits the building as an effluent into the sewer system. Now, the environment inside this bubble is affected by the weather outside the bubble. The sun makes it hot in the summertime. And the winter weather makes it cold. Now, we can control the environment inside this bubble by warming up the water inside the boiler for heat. Or cooling down the water inside the chiller, or you know it as the air conditioning system, to make you more comfortable. So, the more heating and cooling you use, the more energy you use. Now, the larger the facility, the more significant these utility expenses can be. So, do you know how much energy is used in your facility? Hmm? If you don't know how much energy is used, how can you know how to prioritize your energy and water efficiencies? The solution is to use an energy meter to monitor your hydronic system. Mm -hmm. This is also referred to as a BTU meter or heat meter, and it measures heat energy generated by a source or transferred to a load depending on heating or cooling demands. This energy measurement unit is called BTU. That's right, British Thermal Unit. A BTU equals the amount of heat energy that takes to raise the temperature of one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit at sea level. Mm -hmm. Here's an example. In a hydronic system, energy is transferred via a liquid that circulates through a hydronic loop. In the hydronic loop, a source receives liquid, heats or cools the liquid, and supplies the resulting liquid to a load that needs heating or cooling. The basic parameters for your energy meter to calculate BTU is to monitor flow and the supply and return temperature differential. In this example, step one, we need to monitor the flow. Since this is a closed loop that keeps recirculating, we can select either the supply or the return line because they both will be the same. Next, you need to monitor separately the temperature of the supply temperature and the return temperature to come up with temperature differential. With this information, the energy meter calculates your energy and BTU rate and total. Okay, I'll ask you again. Do you know how much energy is used in your facility? Well, let's find out. The first step in the discovery process, you will need to use a reference meter to establish a baseline and map out your source of hot and chill water flows and temperatures. Mm -hmm. And of course, you will need a tool to conduct this survey. Wouldn't it be nice to use a tool that doesn't require you to put a hole in your pipe? Mm-hmm. Well, a non-contact solution would be to use a portable ultrasonic transit time flow meter to conduct your energy survey. 
So using the previous example with a non-invasive portable ultrasonic flow meter system, first you clamp on a transducer to the supply line to measure the flow. And then using a special temperature kit, you clamp on the precision RTDs to the supply and the return line. Temperature differential monitoring is very critical, so it is important to use precision match pair of temperature sensors. In addition to the location of the temperature sensors, it is very important because heat rises. Therefore, duplicate locations in mounting the temperature sensors, say three or nine o'clock, is optimum. Changes in energy do not happen quickly, so most energy surveys take a week or more depending on your system's usage. Needless to say, this survey generates a lot of information that will be stored in the data logger. The Fuji FSC Ultrasonic Flow Meter Logger stores all the data on a 4 gig SD card that has all the data storage that you need, so you can log data until the cows come home. Data retrieval is simple. Just install the SD card into your computer and open the CSV file in Excel. No cables or special software is required. So, the Fuji FSC is one of my favorite flow meters for liquid and energy surveys. It's very easy to use and accessible to all. If you have a long-term use, you can buy it, or if you only have a short-term need, you can rent it by the week or the month. So, price is not an obstacle. Now that you've established the energy applications that need to be closely monitored, you can now move into the control phase. Mm-hmm. Again, without putting any holes in your pipe, with a dedicated version of the ultrasonic transit time energy flow meter, you can install it permanently to monitor flow and temperature. Using the communication outputs like 4 to 20 milliamp pulse, Modbus, BACnet, Ethernet, and so on, you can connect directly with your building automation system to optimize the performance of your energy usage and reduce your utility expenses. Thank you for watching our program. For more information about monitoring non-contact ultrasonic flow and non-contact temperature, we've written a white paper. Mm -hmm. Check it out in the show links listed below. And of course, you can always visit our website at instrumentsdirect.com. So, if you enjoyed our program, I suggest you subscribe to our channel for updates on new videos. Mm -hmm. And as always, we would appreciate any suggestions to technology that we should include in our tech review program. This has been Brent Baird for Instruments Direct. We'll see you next time. Okay, guys. Guys, it's time to get me on the bubble. Legs are cramping up. Come on, guys. It's not funny anymore. Let's get me out of the bubble. Guys, guys, guys.